Hey guys, and welcome to a brand new video. And for me personally, this is a really, really exciting one because I'm going to show you a fantastic new feature, a sneak peek at the new AI agents and AI functions. This is still in development. We are close to finishing it. We're now in the process of recording all the content and also the documentation, and we aim to release it as soon as possible. But in this video, I want to show you a really quick look at how this is going to work for your chatbots. So once going towards the new menu item AI hub, you will be able to see AI agents. And by creating AI agents, you can create different kinds of agents for different kinds of use cases, as I have done when experimenting like you see here. So we have the appointment booking agent, we have a customer support agent, a small talk agent, and these can all work together and I will show you the flow in just a few moments and basically fill their separate functions properly. So if we're going to take a look at the appointment booking agent, for example, that which I set up for testing purposes, you can see we can fill in a name for the agent, a description. You can then generate, auto-generate a prompt that will affect the persona and role, the skill sets, and also the function or the constraints themselves, right? Um, so if you're not really proficient in setting up all of those sections, you can also let AI do it for you based on the description and the name that you gave the agent. And then you can make the small adjustments to fit your own personal use case. But as you can see, uh, we have the name, we have the description in the next setting. Then we have the model that we can choose and we can choose from OpenAI, DeepSeek and XAI. Um, DeepSeek does not have the most stable functions at the moment. So if you are to add AI functions, we still suggest you to take OpenAI for now. If you don't have any need for functions and you just want to create an AI agent that replies without fetching data and stuff like that, then you can basically uh, use any of the available providers. Once you select a model or a provider, you can also select your model. By default, it's already for OpenAI at the 4.0 mini model, but you can easily make changes here as well. If you want to adjust the parameters, you can. And as you can see, we also have some presets. So if you want to have a more creative version of replies, then those will automatically be adjusted. If you want to have more balanced or precise, you can choose from those presets as well. Uh, but you can also make the uh, adjustments yourself. Uh, these are basically the equivalent of the chat completion parameters that you can set up, right? There's also a new feature, and that is to number of chat messages before auto summarization. And this allows you to have more context in the chat history by determining how many messages that are happening between a user and the AI agent before they all get summarized and basically get reinserted as one entry instead of the 20 chat messages back and forth. This reduces the amount of tokens that are used right uh, inside the chat history and allows you to retain more context in the process. So that's a really cool and unique feature that you can use and determine how many messages before that summarization begins. Then you can also have different kinds of text uh, or output formats. So we have text, markdown, and JSON. Markdown is a little bit unique, which is a sort of HTML code, of course, that not all channels uh, support. So channels like Telegram that might use Markdown instead if you like to, right? So that's totally up to you. And the most common practices will be text and JSON outputs. Then we will have the persona and the role that you can set. Uh, you also have the skills that you can set as well. So what skills are, are basically an instruction of the different kinds of functions that this AI agent needs to perform and in which order. So skill set number one, in this case for appointment booking, would be to capture the user details first. Then for skill set number two is fetching the available time slots and let the user choose and after process the booking itself, right? So that is a direct overview of how you can determine the skills and in which order that, that those skills need to be performed. You can either have just the skills and leave it at that, or you can also insert AI functions and AI functions we will get to shortly. Those allow you to fetch or post information between different kinds of providers like fetching time slots and then forwarding those available time slots towards the agent to continue the conversation. So mid-conversation, you can fetch data and use that 
to continue the conversation as well. Really, really cool. And again, we will provide more uh, details and step-by-step -step processes in the videos to come, uh, but that is something that you can do. Constraints, you basically tell the AI agent what to do or what not to do, right? So it's a little bit more of making sure that the AI agent replies to your unique situation. So that is for the AI agent. As mentioned, you can also attach AI uh, functions towards the agents. Those can only be used inside the AI agents, not the, um, not the chat completions and stuff like that. So it's really unique to that. Basically what you can do is you can give it a name and description like the AI agent, give it a prompt, and then also give it parameters and then trigger a workflow. Again, we will go into the exact process later on, uh, but the workflow will basically be triggered after all the function parameters have been met and have been captured. Then you can trigger the workflow to process all of that information, um, basically export it to a CRM, for example, or fetch other kinds of information like available time slots. So what you could do in the case of a appointment booking, you could first fetch all of the available user details, right? Where you can grab the first name, the last name, the email, and then afterwards you can book or fetch all the available time slots and then return that towards the AI agent for the user to pick from those available time slots and continue the conversation that way. So that's a really nice streamlined conversation between a user and the AI agent that you can set up in this way. How does it look like inside the flow? So if we go towards the flow itself, you can go towards the flow builder and basically what you can do is insert an action note and from that action note, you can go towards AI actions and then go towards AI agent. And that will allow you to set up the AI agent itself. And basically, you don't have any need for any additional flows. This single note will have the entire conversation that you set up inside the AI agent, right? Because the functions, if you want to add them and the connected workflows will do all the backend processes, but the single note has the entire conversation for this specific use case, for this specific AI agent involved. So it also reduces the number of notes that you need to normally have included in order to have a proper AI solution. So it's also much cleaner inside of your uh, flow builder as well, right? And you can also add additional agents. So for example, this is a booking agent, but if the intent has been detected that, for example, customer support is needed or just engaging uh, with the user inside of Smalltalk, you can also set that up and then direct them towards the correct agent. So it's a little bit of an intent selector where you can then fetch the user and send them towards the correct agent if this initial agent is not the first step of the user. Inside, you can, of course, select your primary agent. You can also select your secondary agents here, which has a little bit of a different use case and we'll get more into that into the more specific uh, videos, right? Uh, but we also have an idle timeout and that idle timeout basically allows you to set a timeout to continue after a user inactivity. So just like with a question note, if a user is not responding after several minutes or several after the timeout that you set, then you can continue towards the next step. So this continue to next step will then be activated. Um, you can also save the output payload towards a JSON field. It's not really needed, but you can do so if you want to track the specific AI payload that you receive every single time. And so that is also a possibility. This is a first look on how the AI agents are created, how you can use the functions and how you set it up inside the flow builder. More specific use cases are coming soon with complete preview payloads for you to experiment with as well. But for now, I really hope that you are as excited as me into exploring more of this really unique and amazing feature inside of UChat. If you have any questions, do let us know and we'll try to reply as soon as possible. For now, have a great day. Take care and talk soon.